I was walking around the office, and there's an element of the game that involves a crystal ball that's mounted on the game. And I said, hey, where's my crystal ball? Where, where, where my, I'm like, did I actually say that? Did I, did I say, where's my crystal ball? So we, I, it's kind of interesting. It's a, it's a silly thing. But anyway, um, so some of the things that would, would have delayed us, we've gone around certain things, and we've done certain things to um, take up the slack. And uh, you know, people people are sensitive about when they get their game. You know, I'm probably the least patient person right now in the whole process because I'm doing it the longest. So in my mind, you know, where's the game already? But I've had an advantage because I've gotten to play the game, uh, not complete with rules because Keith has had a game home for more than a couple of months and he's working on it and uh, it's 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 going to be a Keith Johnson, you know, masterpiece game and. Um, there's going to be a lot to it. So let me stop. Let me take some questions. Then I'm going to show you some, uh, some things here. And then we're going to have pizza. And then I'm going to go send all your regards to Milwaukee, I guess. <laughs> all right? So anybody have any questions? No? That's pretty cool. Oh, look at this. Yes? You got a ship date yet for WAS? A, a ship date? You know, it's, it's probably sometime June, July. Okay. Is it realistic? Um, we, you know, we said we said in October at um, uh, you know Pinball Expo that we didn't want to ship anything incomplete, you know, and, and we don't. I'll probably find myself laying in the driveway in front of a truck that's trying to leave if I didn't think the game should leave the building yet, and probably the truck driver will run me over, um, and then I don't have to worry about it anymore. Either, so. <laughs> yes. Uh, what was the hardest? Hardest part between last year and this year of building the game? You know, the easy answer would be everything, but that's not the truthful answer. Um, for me personally, my experience was different than, let's say, Joe, or, or let's say um, a number of the other people on the team, because I wasn't physically doing, let's, let's just take Joe for an example. He did so many drawings that a couple of weeks ago when I was out at our office, we were looking at something he did because we were talking about a certain part, and he pulled up the drawing and he said, you know what, I don't even remember doing this. It was like so many long ago. So, you know, uh, project manager Jim Thornton, who's right now been in the middle of the bill of materials, you know, arguing with vendors about price, parts, different things, you know. He's at the office till midnight. He's got to drive home two hours, one way, uh, to get home. You know, those guys, do I talk to them all the time? Am I on the phone with them? Am I, am I there? Am I part of it? Yes, but it's not, it, it's not exactly the same. You know, they look at me and they say, I don't know how you do what you do. And that's good, because you don't have to do it. And I look at them and I say, I don't know how you do what you do. And they say, that's good, because you don't have to do it. And it would be really boring if you had one person that could, that could do everything. I don't know that you'd get really a great product. I think you get a, a, a better product when you really hire the best people, you let them loose, and let them do what they want to do to, to a limit. Now, I'll tell you something about that part. I stood here, and in many places, and I said, we're not going to design games with a calculator. We're going to design games with passion. And I believe that. So, you know, some of our vendors have come to us and say, well, you know, Jack said he's not designing the game with a calculator, so, you know, that's our... Well, that didn't mean Jack wants to get ripped off, okay? <laughs> that's not what I meant. So let me explain to you what I mean. And, you know, I get on the phone and, you know, the conversation, I get my Brooklyn going, because even though I'm Jersey Jack, you know, I'm born in Brooklyn, New York, let's say for Brooklyn, New York. I heard in Texas. You wearing a Texas Ranger shirt? Uh, no, uh, Army Repair Texas. Oh, okay. Well, I see the Texas flag. Then. Don't mess with Texas. I heard, by the way, that they have at uh, the stadium, they have a hot dog that's called the Champion Dog now. Did anybody hear about this yes. thing? So it's two foot and one pound and 26 bucks. <laughs> so you guys in Texas, don't mess with Texas, okay? But then again, don't mess with somebody from Brooklyn, okay? <laughs> So anyway, I go to those vendors, Jim beats them up, and he gets them to where they're a little shangada, we would say in Italian, you know, they're like this, and I get them the rest of the way. 
So you know, if we order 94,000 or something and we can save a penny, that's 940 bucks in our pocket, not in their pocket. And you know, now that they understand this is real, and we pay our bills immediately, we have no debt. The company has no debt, and it will have no debt. Okay. So the power of being able to take out my Montblanc pen that I'm famous for having one of them with me, and signing a check or wiring money to somebody immediately tells them, a, I got to give this guy a better price because the guy's paying me. Okay. And b, um, he's serious. So money talks, and we know what else walks. So uh, that's how that's how I run the thing. So you know, the water wasn't cold. The water was a little a little chilly, but the water right now is boiling. So it feels really good. It feels like me being in my hot tub now. So that's what it feels like. Who else? Yes, sir. Over the long term, are you guys considering maybe doing some non-licensing? Yes. I was speaking to somebody yesterday about doing a game that's not a licensed game. And um, I believe that's still something I want to do. Um, it, it has to have uh, the most important aspect of it, uh, mechanical action, fun. So I can take money that's now directed towards a license. You know, and if you, let's just take a number. If you paid $100,000 for a license, okay, for something. The good thing is you got a license. So now we know The Wizard of Oz is going to tell the story of The Wizard of Oz. We have a lot of intellectual property that we licensed. And remember, this movie now is kind of timeless. Some people thought I was really lost my mind when I licensed that, and a lot of people now have said, oh, that was a wonderful idea. The Wizard of Oz turned 75 in 2014, and they're remastering the movie in 3D. So they're putting about a billion dollars into that movie, and it's going to be re-released in 2,500 theaters, and it's going worldwide to countries that never saw The Wizard of Oz, non-English speaking countries. So millions of people are going to actually discover The Wizard of Oz. So what I said a year ago when I said you couldn't go wrong with a 72-year-old movie, well, I can't go wrong with a 73-year-old movie or a 74-year-old movie or a 75-year-old movie. So we fully intend to keep the license, renew the license. My goal is to build, I don't know, as many, as many Wizard of Oz games as I can build. I think I can build 15,000 games. That's what I think I can build. I hope I'm wrong. I hope we build 25,000 games. You know, and, and you know, we're going to start off building like 15 games a day, which sounds kind of weird. So what's going on now in our building is, as parts are coming in, we're learning how to build our game. So I went from a person that didn't know anything about building pinball <coughs> machines to a person that actually is going to build his own pinball machine himself and then take it home. So we're dissecting how many people, how many workstations, how many parts, and a lot of the parts, what's going to happen is, there's a lot of modular aspect of what we're doing. So we don't have you know, 25 women making wiring harnesses on big boards. So I'm sorry to tell you, when you come to the factory tour, you're not going to see that in my company. Uh, we have a company that making wiring harnesses for the space shuttle. Uh, so they could absolutely make wiring harnesses for a pinball machine company. So you know, I outsourced a lot of things, which is the way to do things today, I believe. Okay, I don't want to have a flipper assembly come to me in 15 parts. You know, I said to the vendor, you want the solder? Yeah, good. You, you assemble all the flipper assemblies. I don't need to be doing that. Okay? So a lot of those things that we've done already, they're already baked into what we're doing. You know, if I needed to pay more for certain things, we paid more for certain things. Something that was very important to me is that I wanted this game to incorporate as many parts from the United States of America uh, as possible. And I paid more, in some cases, to do that. It's not possible to get everything in this game that came from the United States. It's a global economy, it's a global world, you're not here for an economics lesson, you're all smart enough to know things come from China, things come from Asia, things come from Europe, great, you know, so any way that I had to do it, we did it. And I don't know what the percentage of the bill of material is American yet, and we'll have that number, but it's, it's, it's a high number. Um, and all our games are going to be able to, to be worldwide citizens. So, you know, we're going to comply with the, the CB scheme, which includes 45 countries. It'll be FCC, it'll be ETL, it'll be all the standards. 
um, where this game is going to go anywhere in the world. So if the game goes to Germany, it's going to be a Rojas game. If the game goes to Dallas, Texas, it's going to be a Rojas game. I don't believe we should be dumping lead in Europe, and I don't believe we should be dumping lead in the United States of America. Okay? So some of the decisions that I made are not based on money. They're based on what I wanted and what I believe you wanted and what our distributors wanted. Because as a distributor of pinball machines, I want to support our distributors the way maybe I wasn't supported all the time. I really didn't forget how I was treated. It didn't motivate me to put anybody out of business, okay? My intent is not to put Stern Pinball out of business, okay? My intent is to make pinball go and be played by new generations of people that never played pinball before. Because young people, they play like really great games on their iPhones or their mobile devices or whatever. They play Angry Birds, they play all this kind of stuff. Some of the young people in the room play pinball because of you guys, the adults, because they grew up with it. It was in the basement, like my daughter, like my son. They grew up in the amusement industry, and they play pinball, and they got to love it for what it is and what we love it for. Unfortunately, pinball now has become something relegated to a museum. You know, God bless the Pacific Pinball Museum, and you know, Vegas, and and you know, uh, Washington D.C. Yes. Pinball does not belong in a museum. It's not, you know, Sue the Dinosaur at the Field Museum in Chicago, all right? 